Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Entitled Parents Reddit video. In our first story, a weird woman believes sailboats are all public property. Let's jump right in. I'm a 43-year-old IT guy, divorced with two kids, a 9-year-old girl and a 7-year-old boy. I'm a member of a yacht club and own a smallish 34 Bavaria cruiser from 2008. Next to my kids, she's my pride and joy. Every year, I take three weeks vacation along with my kids and we go cruising for the better part of those three weeks. We have a small dinghy that basically serves as our pickup truck, food hall. Now, because of COVID, we couldn't go anywhere outside our home country, so we said flip it. We'll be tourists in our own country and went for a cruise to all the small cozy harbors we normally don't see. So cruise is a go. My son knows about the lines and knows how to dock and whatnot. My daughter is the dinghy skipper during this. She loves that thing. We always have our club pennant flying as well as the Jolly Roger. Jolly Roger means kids on board, come play. We leave our home port and spend a day and night at sea to get the sea legs growing and sharpen up on our boating drills. Retired Navy can't help it. On our third day, we arrive at a small-ish marina, roughly 200 berths. In my country, calling ahead on VHF is not a thing, so the only thing to do is either going in with the boat or send in the dinghy to spot for a berth. Now, occupied berths are marked with a red sign, available is a green sign. My kids know this and are also learning to spot a fitting berth. Our boat is 3.6 meters wide, and berths are different in width. So the trick is to spot a berth wider than 3.6, but not wider than 4 meters because that's the golden difference. Any berth wider than 4 meters costs a ton of money and is meant for bigger boats. Well, Captain Dinghy was volunteering, as always, to scout ahead while I and the XO were watching from just outside the inlet. She's equipped with, of course, life jacket, radio, not VHF since that requires a certificate, and a good idea on how wide 3.6 meters really is. Our dinghy happens to be 3.5 meters long, so as long as she can fit the dinghy from end to end between the posts, it fits, including the engine. Now, most people that hang around marinas are used to seeing children in dinghies, and wouldn't raise an eyebrow over a nine-year-old girl in a small dinghy wearing a life jacket and looking for empty berths. However, not all people are like that, which we would soon find out. She found a spot and radioed that back saying, I've got one, Daddy. It's the Jeep here and I'm waiting for you here. Over. I replied with, Good job. En route now. Daddy out. The owners of the boats on either side are caring, nice older couples, and the portside neighbors especially are completely stunned by Captain Dinghy and her professionalism. They are small talking when we arrive to the berth and help with mooring, for which I pay with a cold beer and a soda for the kids. Happy days all around. On the opposite side of the pier, a couple of boats are also flying the Jolly Roger, so the kids are off after a quick lunch. The berth directly opposite us is also available, but knowing from experience that will soon change. And how right I was. Later in the afternoon we saw the arrival of HMS Karen and her sailing circus. They arrived while the nice grandparents next door and I were discussing nice marinas to visit and as a matter of course, we stood by to help receive lines and help with mooring. To simplify their docking, it was a crap show. They had a trimaran, three hulls. The outer two can retract when you dock and extend when you sail. They knew nothing about the boat, so clearly a rental boat. After five or six attempts of docking with one side retracted, other side retracted, no sides retracted, full power plus screaming all around. The harbor master even came down to join us, now we stand eight guys plus one harbor master and just looking like, what the flip are you doing? Even my seven-year-old son comes by with some new friends going, are they for real? Grandma Port quickly provided some ice and soda for the kids. She was amazing. 
We managed to convince them, the wrecking crew, to throw us the forward lines and we could pull them in after they retracted both pontoons. This took the better part of one and a half hours. When they finally docked, they acted like they invented boating. I know that docking in a foreign port can be quite difficult, but when you need eight people to help you, one might keep a low profile. Not that couple, though. They were totally clueless about how to get shore power, water, and how to register with the harbor master, who happened to stand right in front of them when they docked. The harbor master is now trying to guide them in how to register, what to do regarding shore power and water, and boy, did they listen. HMS Karen started full yell about how they have paid a lot of money to rent that boat and how they expected harbor fees to be included in the rent. And she threatened to report the harbor master to the rental company they used and get him fired for trying to extort money from them. After her endless monologue, there were about eight to ten guys laughing. The harbor master just looked at them and went, okay, these are the rules. Each marina requires a fee for docking. That fee covers power, water, and the space you occupy. It includes access to bathrooms, cooking facilities, and cleaning. Your rental company does not own any marina. Is that clear? The circus husband understood, but failed to convey the last part to HMS Karen, something we found out later the next morning. The next morning, we prepared to go underway. My kids are saying goodbye to their new friends. My son is pampered with cookies from Grandma Port and Starboard. Broken hearts from the young girls in the marina. He's got blonde hair with curls and green eyes. A heartbreaker. And Captain Dingy is getting ready to go underway. She's dressed in the uniform for the part. Unicorn PJ pants, swimwear, and life jacket. Here's where the title comes into play. We are finishing our stay, meaning pulling our shore power cable, testing lights and systems, testing our bow thruster and prop, VHF and dinghy. While I'm standing at the stern, ready to single up the line so my curly-haired XO will have an easy job, HMS Karen comes running up to me. What are you doing? Good morning. We'll get underway now. We're going to this island recommended by Grandma Port. Enjoy your stay here. What? You can't leave. Um, pretty sure I can. Why wouldn't I? Because we want that boat. What? You want my boat? I'm laughing now. Lady, my boat is not for sale, so excuse me. We have to go. No, all boats are property of the rental company, and we called them yesterday and chartered that boat. Now hand it over or else. Lady, you're nuts. To XO, clear forward lines. To Captain Dingy, meet up outside the marina, docking starboard side. Now, we are not attached to the marina anymore, and my son is rolling up the bow lines when HMS tries to grab the push pit to keep us in the marina. Well, she lost that battle. All stop, man overboard. She came up yelling and screaming. Starboard Granddad guided her on board their boat while asking her what the hell she was doing. Port Granddad called the harbor master. Is she okay? Yes, we've got her. Enjoy your trip and we'll see you in port. We leave and head for the port. And oh boy, did I hope she was a one-time Karen. I'll write part two when I get back from the boat. Drying pillows, cushions, sails, and whatnot is a real bitch. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe. And make sure you click on notifications so that YouTube will actually show you my videos. We would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.